Now we're going to see how to determine R and S when you're dealing with chair cyclohexane. How do you determine R and S when you're dealing with chair cyclohexane? It turns out that chair cyclohexane introduces some new issues that we haven't had to deal with yet. Um, if your organic chemistry class is a relatively easy class, you might not really need the skill that we're going over in this portion of the videos. Uh, your instructor might not expect you to be able to determine R or S for chair cyclohexane. Um, so if you don't feel that this is material that you're really going to be seeing in your course, maybe you might want to skip this portion of the videos. On the other hand, if you're in a fairly rigorous OCHEM class, there's actually a pretty good chance that your instructor might want to see whether you can assign R and S for chair cyclohexane. Um, and in that case, it could be to your benefit to watch what we're going to be talking about here. So let's say we were trying to, con uh, to determine uh, the configuration for this molecule. Well, let's find the stereocenter. There's only one stereocenter up here. The first thing you should probably do is draw in the hidden hydrogen. It's always a good idea to draw in the hidden hydrogen. Here's the hidden hydrogen. I hope you can see why this is a stereocenter. Obviously, the hydrogen is different from the methyl group. And if you follow this path around the ring, you're going to meet uh, different things than if you follow this path around the ring. If you go this path along the ring, you uh, immediately bump into a quaternary carbon. But if you go this path around the ring, the first thing you bump into is a secondary carbon. So clearly those are two different paths. So this is a stereocenter. Now the big problem that we have here is that all along we've been relying on the dashes and the wedges in the pictures to tell us whether things are pointing towards us or away from us. Um, or on a Fisher projection, even though there are no dashes and wedges, we know that the horizontal lines are really like wedges, and the vertical lines are really like dashes. So all the pictures we've seen so far have had dashes or wedges um, in them, basically. But when we draw chair cyclohexane, we don't draw in dashes and wedges. So how can we figure out... Um, so the problem is, how can we figure out um, then who's pointing towards us and who's pointing away from us in this picture? How can we figure out who's pointing towards us and who's pointing away from us if there's no dashes and there's no wedges? Well, there's two things you can do. First of all, if you really understand this drawing of chair cyclohexane, it should be clear to you which of the bonds are pointing away from you, which are pointing towards you, and which are in the plane of the page. If you really have a good understanding of what the picture of chair cyclohexane is, then you shouldn't need to see the wedges and dashes. You should already know which of these bonds are pointing towards you and which of the bonds are pointing away from you. Uh, well, later in this series of videos, uh, I think I'd like to cover um, how we can figure out whether this is R or S by properly interpreting chair cyclohexane. Uh, but I think for most people, it's not worth really worrying about that. Instead, you can just use a trick. Um, so what we're going to go over now is a trick. Um, a trick that you can use to figure out whether this is R and S, even if you don't really understand this picture of chair cyclohexane. All right, so let's go through this trick. How can you determine whether this is R or S without drawing the whole thing? Well, the trick is just to redraw it as flat cyclohexane. Let's just redraw this molecule as if it were flat. Try to do that. See if you can draw this, redraw this molecule as if it were flat. Let's say that this is the stereocenter up here. Now I need to draw in, um, well then, here's the two methyl groups. Now I know I've got to draw on here a wedge and a dash. Uh, on one of those we have to draw the methyl group and on one we have to draw the hydrogen. But how do we know who to draw where? Well, the trick is, whoever was pointing up in this picture should end up on the wedge in the flat picture. And then whoever was pointing down in this picture should end up on the dash in this picture. Uh, for example, take a look at this hydrogen. Is this hydrogen pointing up or down? Well, it's pretty clear it's pointing straight up. Well, again, the rule is, if you're pointing up in the chair picture, you should be on the wedge in the flat picture. And then what about um, this group over here? Well, this is not pointing straight down. 
but you can see it's still pointing somewhat down. It's definitely not pointing up. This methyl group is definitely not pointing up, so this is still considered a downward pointing substituent. So please make sure you understand why this is considered downward pointing. Even though it's not pointing straight down, it's pointing somewhat down. It's definitely not pointing up. So this is pointing somewhat down. Remember that anything that's pointing down in the chair picture gets translated onto the dash. Whatever's pointing up in the chair picture gets put on the wedge in the flat picture. And whatever's pointing down in the chair picture gets put on the dash in the flat picture. Uh, remember that some of the things won't be pointing straight up and straight down, but they still will be pointing somewhat up and somewhat down. This methyl group was pointing somewhat down, so it goes on the dash. Now, it's very important when you do this that you maintain the relationships between the different carbons here. Uh, what I mean by that is, notice, how could you go from this stereo center to these two methyl groups? If you were going to start at this stereo center and go to these methyl groups, you would be moving clockwise around the ring, wouldn't you? If you started here and you wanted to get to here directly, you'd have to move clockwise around the ring. You wouldn't want to go counterclockwise, that would be a long way around. Well, we have to maintain that clockwise relationship over here, and you can see that I've done that. Starting at this stereo center, if we go clockwise, we directly run into the two methyl groups. Counterclockwise would be the long way. That way we know that this flat picture really represents the chair picture. So when you're making something uh, into a flat picture, there's two things you have to be careful with. Everything that's up in this picture goes on a wedge. Everything that's down in this picture goes on a dash. And make sure that you maintain the same clockwise or counterclockwise arrangement from the chair also on the flat picture. Okay, and now it should be easy to determine whether this is R or S, because now we have dashes and wedges. It's easy to determine R and S if you have dashes and wedges. This carbon is attached to a carbon, a carbon, and another carbon. This carbon on the left is attached to a carbon and two hidden hydrogens. And the carbon on top is connected to three hydrogens. So this carbon on the right gets the number one priority. The carbon on the left gets the number two priority. And the carbon on the dash gets the number three priority. Now the number four is pointing towards us. That's no good, so we've got to swap that with the number three. You can see how convenient it is to have the wedge. Without the wedge, we can't tell if the hydrogen is pointing towards us or not, but now we can tell. Now one to two to three are arranged clockwise, but since we made a swap, the true configuration is S. So this has an S configuration. That means that this chair cyclohexane also has an S configuration. If you correctly translate the chair picture into the flat picture, then whatever the configuration in the flat picture is, that's also going to be the configuration in the chair picture. All right, so this is our trick for dealing with chair cyclohexane. If you're given chair cyclohexane, it's difficult to deal with because the dashes and the wedges are not shown explicitly. So as a trick, you could just redraw it in, as a flat picture, and that will have dashes and wedges, and whatever, and then you can figure out whether this picture has an R or an S, and that's going to be the same as this picture. Remember that everything that's up on the chair goes onto a wedge um, on the flat picture. Everything that's pointing downwards on the chair goes um, onto the dash. And make sure that um, if the substituents are arranged clockwise on the chair, they should also be arranged clockwise on the 